Once around, little red dots. Now, what's this all about? These little red dots are a class of tiny red-coloured galaxies that were discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope, um, and 341 of them are catalogued in a survey in 2024, so fairly recently. There's an illustration of a few of them, and they do indeed just look like little red dots in the image to the right there. These are, of course, very distant objects indeed. We're talking about small galaxies that were formed some 600 million years after the Big Bang, so 13.2 billion years ago, in an epoch lasting around a billion years from then. So there's a range of distances, a range of ages corresponding to that. And that all corresponds to a very significant amount of redshift the expansion of the universe that's occurred as the light has come from these very ancient objects all the way to us traveling through space and the space has expanded and stretched the wavelength and the z factor the amount of stretch is in the range of between four and eight for most of these galaxies um, there are some reports that it's as low as two in some cases indicating a much nearer younger age and possibly going as far back as 11 but most of them are in this middle range, four to eight. Now, we just don't see any objects like this at more recent epochs, closer by at lower redshifts. We think these are galaxies in formation and uh, that uh, that process has now stopped. And so we just don't see any in the modern universe at all. They are tiny. 500 light years in diameter maximum, some of them are smaller. That's around 2% the diameter of our Milky Way, so very small indeed. And it looks like those with higher redshifts around the sort of eight mark are smaller even than the nearer ones, indicating a degree of growth. And that makes a lot of sense, as we shall see. We think that they are illuminated by the process of having an active galactic nucleus. We see in the spectrum of the light, the absorption lines and emission lines of the Balmer series, the uh, transitions of hydrogen gas. And those are very indicative of an active galactic nucleus, an AGN. We think that's a, a supermassive black hole where matter is spiraling in getting very, very hot through release of gravitational energy and turning it into heat via friction inside an accretion disk before it falls into the black hole. And that disk can end up at hundreds of thousands or even millions of degrees. And therefore, a lot of very high energy radiation can emerge from the disk itself. And the disk can be rotating incredibly rapidly as it does so. The magnetic fields get very highly twisted and form jets, as you can see in the image to the right of another AGN. And that rapid rotation rate means that some of the disk is coming towards you, some is going away from you, and that creates a very wide spread in the Doppler shift, shifting some of the light towards the red end of the spectrum, some towards the blue end, and broadening all those spectral lines. And so that's uh, really how the evidence is stacking up. And what this is pointing to is a process of inside out growth. There has always been two competing theories about how galaxies grow, the inside out growth model or the inside out quenching model. And the uh, predictions of those are different for the way that the color of the galaxy should change in the lower model, the quenching model, the red and blue coloration should remain the same for a long time until uh, the latter stages, whereas in the inside out growth method, the red color should decline much more rapidly than the blue. And it seems that that's what's uh, happening here. Now, Another competing theory, though, is that these objects are not really galaxies at all, but are quasi stars. A huge star that may have formed very early on in the universe. Clouds of the primordial hydrogen and helium and maybe a lot of dark matter 
left over from the Big Bang, all pulling together by gravity and forming an absolute monster. And we have a hypothetical size of a quasi star shown there compared to some of the largest stars that we know of. Um, so these are truly vast. They, they would be anything from a thousand to 10,000 solar masses. And at that sort of size, they would very rapidly end up crushing their cores with the immense amount of gravity down to a black hole in the center. And usually when we have a collapse of a core in a uh, more reasonable sized star, that results in such an energy release as all the material falls deep into the gravity well, a huge amount of energy is released. And that's usually enough to then blast the star apart. But here, the star is so massive that the outer envelope absorbs that energy and becomes very hot, but doesn't disperse. And so you end up with a very large hydrogen helium envelope overlying a central black hole that you can't see. And of course, the material is still going to gradually fall into the black hole, releasing yet more gravitational potential energy as it falls. And that's going to power the star to be very hot for a significant period of time. Much more power available that way than any process of nuclear fusion can release. It's one of the most efficient sources of energy in the universe is a gravitational collapse. And so this would make them very bright and thus visible at such immense distances. And the black hole will gradually grow as it feeds on the material and probably consume the whole star in seven to 10 million years, depending on how massive they are in the first place, um, and become an intermediate mass black hole in that sort of range of a thousand to 10,000 solar masses. And that may be where supermassive black holes get their start in life. So um, it, it's a bit of a possibility that these things could be one, the other, or both of an active galactic nucleus or a quasi star with a black hole at its core. And maybe they start off as one and end up forming into the other. More research is needed. Now, if you are interested in that sort of thing, I've got a couple of videos that you might really enjoy. One called, Does the Sun Have a Dark Heart? Uh, the URL is there, but I'm sure you can find it by searching on my channel for those words. And the other, Thorn Zitkow Objects, and again, the URL there. So please go and have a look at those, because they talk to the same sort of idea of quasi and exotic hybrid stars. And with that, thanks very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.